Yes, hello and welcome to Good News News, where we deliver news on the good news. Just trying to start off with something a little different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No? Okay. I am to be woman's trust you, and like always, boy, do we have some news for you. These are our top stories. Malawi makes mission their main priority. Paths paved by Pathfinders on virtual platform in Botswana. Homely Holy Community holds true in Mauritius. Single Soul helps school his community. Now without further ado, how about some news? Pathfinders, they play a critical role in the church. In fact, I'd go so far as to say they are the future leaders and members of the church. Plus they got those sick badges. Their uniforms, they're nice. They can start a fire with sticks and stones. Sticks and stones, people. Don't even get me started on their rope tying skills. Box knot. Now, let me not get too distracted though, because the question that has been on there, and let's be honest, most of our minds has been, how do we navigate the COVID-19 crisis to draw young people close to God? I mean, God still expects us to mold these young people into ambassadors for Christ, right? So, with a little creativity, the good folks in Botswana took to their screens. Now to take a look at what the South Botswana Conference has been up to, we turn it over to our correspondent, Clyde Ritzabile. Clyde? Annually, the highlight of Pathfinder Ministries is a Pathfinder campout where Pathfinder clubs go out to showcase what they have been learning during the year. The advent of COVID-19 and restrictions on public gatherings shook and changed the order of business in the Pathfinder Ministries department in Botswana and globally. This year, South Botswana Conference Youth Department, under the leadership of Pastor Tapoloho Simangani, planned and ran a successful virtual camp from the 16th to the 20th of July 2021 that attracted over 700 pathfinders comprising of Adventists and non-Adventists. This is what he had to say. Hi everybody, this is uh, Pastor Tebs from the South Botswana Conference. I'm excited to share about our camp. It's a virtual camp. However, I should tell you that our children out there are actually camping. I don't know my girls have pitched a tent at the house. So it's so exciting. The kids have missed camp over a year now. The theme for the camp was Send Me, in line with I Will Go, the current Adventist global theme. With Pastor Matia Basso as the guest speaker. It's been such a wonderful experience to serve as one of the speakers for the Pathfinder camp, the virtual Pathfinder camp. And I love Pathfinder so much and serving the Pathfinders in this manner has been a great honor. And we've been preaching the theme that says, Send Me. This is in line with the church's strategic plan that says, I will go. So we're just trying to cultivate a mentality of service, of mission, even in the Pathfinders. It's going good and I'm being blessed as God is giving me messages to talk to the young people. This is Gami Clyde Ratshabili reporting for GNN. Thank you very much, Clyde, for that wonderful story. And it is exciting seeing kids camping again. It shows that we're moving in the right direction. And Pastor Taps, amazing name, by the way, and we appreciate your initiative. Now, we all know that as a church that every quarter we remember Christ in a very special way by taking Holy Communion. You still remember Holy Communion, right? Oh, I'm asking because for the past year and some change, the COVID-19 pandemic made it difficult for most churches to hold this Holy Communion service. Now, I honestly never thought I could miss washing someone's feet as much as I do now. But that's not the point, because in Mauritius, they have defied all odds by having their service virtually. How did they do it? Well, let's find out. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced the church to be creative in performing services in a way that we could never have imagined before. Faced with the fear of transmission and restrictions on gatherings, Mauritius organized a virtual Holy Communion service for all churches in its conference.
The service was recorded in the First Adventist Church of Mauritius, Rose Hill. Led by President Baxson and Ministerial Secretary Pastor Tigress, the format had all the elements of a physical Holy Communion service. Prior to the service, members were given the option to receive bread and wine from the church or to receive the recipe in order to prepare the bread on their own and purchase grape juice from the store. On the appointed day, those who didn't have access to the internet gathered in small groups at homes of those who had internet facilities in order to participate in the service. They are living in the future. Okay, let me tell you, I am all for it. And the amazing thing about this is, okay, I'm not gonna lie. Whenever we have communion and I reach into the plate, I low key hope I will pull out a, let's say, a greater sized portion. And I know, I know, I know it's not about the bread and the wine physically, but it's about what they symbolize and what they represent. I honestly know that, I do. But uh, is there something wrong with wanting a little more of the body of Christ? Anyways, with the virtual service, I would be able to get a more uh, customized portion. <laughs> now, if you've lost all hope in mankind, well, this story will hopefully change your mind. A man from a village called Ray Kelly in Madagascar committed himself to get this, building a school for hundreds of children who never could attend school. Now, because ADRA is committed to work in difficult conditions and remote areas to assist the most needy children, the organization decided to assist this school through the School Feeding Initiative. There are now more children coming to school in that area. Plus, no students have dropped out. And the rate of student absenteeism and the student repeating grades has greatly decreased. Have a look. Na tungwa hanuka ta sekulie tzan. Nuni habetan yang kizietu. Jai bula tsi nyana tamisi hatam nam kunteran. Yala nam tsi 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 Nuni <laughs> Tamfana <laughs> Nambotre <laughs> Arma Mituan, Arab Tovana Mar Samyaf, Afanjo and Kis Mianet, and at Tuntul Minsk. Well, Sifizan de Miamar Yank Mianet, Tinis in Fuhan and Daran, Nihena Lito de Dabsan, Nihena Lito de Dublima, 
Mtoya chan fan wana ni atra ni anki sun fan apeyazan. Fuma kia itumbo mfukaj. Refa manulte na tuku ambufuta fan apeyazan na iropiara mia samrej au na tunzansi atsan. Now, I love this story for many reasons, but I especially love it for this. All it took was one, okay? One person to get this beautiful snowball of kindness rolling. Just one man who said, if I want to see change, I have to start with the change. And because of that one person, hundreds if not thousands of lives are going to be affected. If you've ever wondered, uh, one person, can one person make a difference? It's stories like this that make me say, yes, yes, you, that one person watching, you alone can start something so beautiful that God can grow it into something you never could imagine. That's why I will go is so important, because it starts with I, that one. Speaking of I Will Go, a church in Malawi is on a mission to help the world understand more about how Adventists worship through evangelism. Now, what's especially incredible is that they've gone a step further by inviting other denominations within their community. They hosted the Standard for Life church pastor and his members to a day where they had a plethora of activities organized in an attempt to showcase Christ. Now, amongst these activities, the visitors got to experience the joys of the Sabbath rest, a potluck, you know I love me some potlucks, and the distribution of the book of the year, and they got a chance to enroll in the VOP Bible School. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm telling you, these guys are in full swing for I will go. This, yes, this is evangelism. It's ministry. It's exactly what I will go is all about. Okay? Going out into the world, reaching people and telling them about Christ. Now, sticking with that same theme of I will go, GC president, fellow PKN, my best friend. That's right, I'm best friends with the GC president. All right, I'm sorry, Dwayne. You can't be my best friend anymore. JD, my bad guy. I mean, I love you guys, all right? You're cool boys. But, you know, he's, he's president. Can't blame me, can you? You, you know what? We'll, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you joined us last time, we were having such an amazing conversation, but we had to cut it short. However, Pastor Wilson is back with us and he has some amazing things to tell us about I Will Go. Oh, yeah. I bet you thought I'd forgotten where I was going, but I still remembered. Anyway, without further ado, once again, let's give Pastor Ted Wilson that warm GNN welcome. Come on. Beow, 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 beow. Three words that I have been um, hearing a lot within the church pertaining to that. And those three words, and I think you briefly uh, touched them, were, uh, I will go. Um, could you please tell us the importance of this strategy, especially, um, like I said, in the last days that we're living in, the tippy toes of, of the statue, like you said. Well, uh, you know, we have strategic plans which are developed uh, because of research and because of helping to find out where the church is really needing certain encouragement mm -hmm. and focus. Uh, and these strategic plans are developed for the coming five years. Right. Now, right now, we're, we're already into this quinquennium and we won't even be having general conference session until next year. Right. Uh, because we had to postpone it twice. Uh, I mean, it would have been almost impossible to have people come. People still can't even fly from certain places or are restricted and everything. But by God's grace, we're going to have a good general conference session in 2022. But beginning this quinquennium, which actually began, uh, you know, at the, in the middle of 2020, mm. We had already laid plans and the, the world divisions. We have 13 world divisions and we have two attached unions, right. the Middle East, North Africa Union Mission and the Chinese Union Mission, huge areas of challenge for us in the 1040 window. And we have the Israel Field, which is an attached mission to the General Congress. But these 13 world divisions accepted these wonderful strategic plans, which had been developed. They were made simple forthright 
And when we were developing those plans, uh, now, I don't know, maybe about three years ago now, um, we, we continued with the thought, reach the world. Right. That was the theme for the previous quinquennium. And divisions like continuity, they like to have something continue. So right. reach the world. Okay. But, you know, we wanted something very personal. Mm. We wanted something catchy. And we heard about a group of young people in Argentina at the university there, Universidad uh, Adventista del Plata. And they had come up with a very powerful mission focus. Mm. You know, what? people like you, young people who are just on fire for the Lord, I'll tell you, the Lord can use them in a mighty way. And we believe in our young people. Mm. And these young people were so mission focused and they were trying to figure out what can we come up with in terms of a, a theme. And so these young people came up with this very personal and active theme. Simple. I will go. Right. We heard about it and we said, you know, can we use that for the world's strategic plans? And of course, somebody was assigned to contact them and they, you know, they said, of course, yes, yes, you can do that and everything. But I think they wanted everybody to know that young people came up with that beautiful, <laughs> simple slogan. Of course. <laughs> I will go. So I'm telling you right here on GNN that young people were the ones that implemented and instigated, I will go. And of course, that comes from, from Isaiah chapter six, where Isaiah was uh, in vision, and I'm not going to go in, it's a beautiful story, but at the very end, because his lips were touched with that coal from the altar and his sins were forgiven, he was so excited because he felt so small in the presence of God, but he was purified. He was justified. He was sanctified through the righteousness of Christ. When, when that was put on his lips, it just made him so happy. Right. And that's the same thing today. The Lord will give us his righteousness if we come to him. He will justify justify us he will sanctify us and he was so excited when he heard the voice of the lord and the lord said who will we send who will go for us right. and um isaiah got so excited he says here i am oh, i'm yeah. here <laughs> me. i'm the one who can go i will go mm. and so that's where really it comes from from isaiah 6 verse 8 and uh it's a wonderful Wonderful theme. And I want to tell you something. Mm. Uh, all over the world, this has caught on like perhaps nothing else has caught on except total member involvement. That's all <laughs> over the world, too. Right. People want to be involved. Mm. So you're involved in total member involvement and you say, yes, Lord, I will go. I'll do whatever I need to do to proclaim this last day message and the three angels messages of Revelation 14 and the fourth angel uh, Revelation 18, calling people out of Babylon and confusion and back to the true worship of God. I will go. Mm. And, and it's, it's such a, a, a brilliant thing. So shout out to all the young uh, uh, people who are on fire for the Lord. And it's such a catchy thing. In fact, I was, I was uh, on the website, um, I believe, uh, a little while ago. And um, uh, it was talking about, uh, I was looking at the KPIs. And if you're watching, please go on the I Will Go website. It's such a br brilliant thing just on the screen below. So I was on the website um, and I saw that one of the mission uh, KPIs addresses significant increases in acceptance and practice of the church's uh, distinctive beliefs. You know, things like uh, creation, salvation by faith, and the state of the dead. Now, uh, if I may ask, is this um, because the, you feel the core of our beliefs might be under attack? And if so, how would we be able to curb uh, this challenge? Well, <laughs> one of the most important things, and if I fail to get anything across, I hope this will be the important one. Mm. Take the word of God, read it, believe it as you read it. Mm. Don't try to reinterpret everything. Don't try to listen to people who are going to tell you, well, it really doesn't mean this right. and it means this. Let the Bible interpret itself. Mm. That's the way Seventh-day Adventists have looked at it for 
decades, many years, and it's the way we still do. Use the the historical biblical approach right. of of interpretation or the historical grammatical approach. It's one or the other. It's the same thing. Allowing the Bible verse upon verse, precept upon precept. Let the Bible interpret itself and let the Holy Spirit lead you in that. Stay kilometers away from the historical critical method. Don't mm. become a big critic. Oh, I'm so smart. I'm so educated. <laughs> I can tell what is truth and what is not true. Right. Stay away from it. <laughs> Higher criticism has wrecked the lives of so many young people and older ones. Right. <laughs> a simple faith in what God says mm. and then say, Lord, I believe it. So this is really something we are attempting to do to help people get back to the Bible in terms of our beliefs, our understanding of the beliefs, that we don't uh, wander from what Scripture says. Once you, <laughs> once you make uh, someone's blog or once you make social media your Bible, mm. you are going to be so misled right. and so off track. Mm with the Bible, get back to God's word. And, and I don't make any apologies about this, and the spirit of prophecy. One of the greatest gifts God's given to the Seventh-day Adventist church. The spirit of prophecy is not some, you know, vol volumes and volumes of rules you have to keep and mm. all this, and no, it's instruction for every facet of life. Mm. It's tremendous and it points us back to the Bible and to Jesus Christ. Mm. We believe the Bible is the foundation of our faith. We do not have two Bibles. We have the Holy Word, 66 books. Yes, sir. But then the spirit of prophecy leads us to understand further how to live and beautiful understandings of God's word. So in the aspect of us trying to help church members all over the world understand the biblical truths, the 28 fundamental beliefs we have, go back to the Bible. Mm. Now, let me just mention one other thing. In many parts of the world where Christianity is not very strong, mm. many of our church members, unfortunately, at times, some of them, can mix certain local, cultural, traditional, ancestral beliefs into the Bible truths. Mm. And you have to be very careful about that. There's nothing wrong with culture. There's nothing wrong with our ancestry mm. and our wonderful heritage, but don't allow unfortunate or ill-conceived falsehoods of spiritism, right. of whatever it might be to creep in because that, that's called syncretism. So you end up with a religion that is a mishmash of this and that. I don't care what culture you're in. I don't care what country you're in. I don't care what background you've come from. Mm. Stay close to the word. The word crosses all cultural and linguistic and international boundaries. It's from heaven itself. And, and I love I love that you you you, you brought that up because I, I was wondering because um, there's a lot of um, issues of like uh, race and, and culture that that kind of creep in um, and people might feel a bit fatigued or, or tired and and might be a bit overwhelmed by all of this. Can we have some kind of encouragement for um, someone who might be feeling that kind of way? Well, let me tell you, down through the ages, because people are human beings mm. and they are not centering their lives in Christ, and that's what we need to do every morning. I don't know what you did this morning, but this morning when I got out of bed and I dropped to my knees mm. and I just consecrate my life to the Lord and ask for the Holy Spirit to enter, I ask for the latter rain of the Holy Spirit mm. to come, I ask mm. for wisdom you know, young people, especially who are watching, ask God for what he has offered. James 1, 5, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. Every day I try to ask for it because I'm not smart enough to do the work that I'm doing. Right. I need wisdom from heaven. Right. I'm just a humble servant of the Lord, just like anyone else. And I need, I need God's guidance. Mm. So you need to be focused in the Lord. Unfortunately, many people haven't been. Right. 
and art aren't and many times we mistreat other people mm. we mistreat other cultures we mistreat other people groups uh, you know down through the ages this has been a terrible curse right and of all people seventh day adventists should show full respect for people right. i don't care what culture you're in and i i have to tell you i've lived in many different cultures right. in the middle east in africa in russia uh, in europe i spent some time uh, united states i don't care what culture it is if you show respect and genuine goodwill and an appreciation for people mm. you will get that back from people mm. and it, it's time for the seventh day Adventist church to have and and you know we try and people have tried and we got we have to continue to try by the grace of God right. is only by the grace of God to have good human relations mm. so that we won't have caste system. We won't have tribal system. Right. We won't have racial discord. Mm. We won't have classism. All of this. I mean, all of that, a lot, a lot of that is going to continue in the world, but in our relationship with each other, everyone is 100% accepted by God as a child of his. Mm. Now, we need to treat people with respect. Now, if somebody is in a, a sinful situation and a relationship, uh, whatever that may be, and there are challenges we face today where people are in sinful situations, mm. we need to love that person, but we need to point them to the one who can make them whole the one who can bring that beautiful relationship back. So the challenges that we're facing with human relations, with tribal problems, with racial problems, with interpersonal problems, these can only find their source of solution as we go to the Lord first and let the atmosphere of heaven pre pre pervade our pervade our own experience with people and then the lord will speak through us to show great respect and care for our fellow brothers and sisters and seventh day adventists uh, will be known at the end of time as people of unity because the holy spirit will be working in their lives so powerfully so you know the god is going to work in a marvelous way to show the world he has a people who can show great love to those who are different from them, but who are wonderful uh, sons and daughters of God. Right. And, and on a, um, just to get, get to a lighter note, um, there's something that we actually share besides uh, being PKs. And that is Heroes 2, which is an app that we had. Now, I heard when I was speaking to Pastor Sam Nervous that you played the game. Now, whether or not you won or lost is neither here nor there, and we won't necessarily get into that. But I was wondering what your experience was playing this game. Well, I played Heroes 1, and uh, I, I have yet to play Heroes 2, but I've certainly seen promotion and worked with Sam Nevis and whatnot right. uh, on this and, and we, we, to, to promote it and everything. Heroes 1 and 2 is simply an attempt in a very uh, contemporary way, a very engaging way, to bring especially young people into a realm of understanding that this word and the characters in this word right. who were simple, humble human beings who were sinful but loved God, mm. that God could work in them to change their lives mm. and bring about positive, exciting results. And as you focus, as Heroes 2 focuses on the amazing, uh, the amazing activities of people in the bible and how god used them for the betterment of his church and for the betterment of others mm. you know young people then when they do that and they get involved in it and they answer questions and they find out answers of of eternal worth mm. they then become much more acquainted with the word of god and they will be drawn to actually study the word of god who was it that made those differences in the pe in people's lives? And 
then they'll find real meaning because they'll find a relationship with Jesus. And, and, and uh, it's amazing that you actually uh, play a uh, hero's one, I believe you said. And because I've heard people say things like, um, you know, uh, games and apps like are just for entertainment and uh, spiritually pointless. Um, but I want to uh, I want to just dispel this theory once and for all because you played it uh, heroes one and as an adult and as a church leader. Are there new things that you discovered while playing uh, the game? Well, I mean, if you have to answer, answer questions, I mean, I have to admit I'm a pastor, but I don't know all the answers, okay? Mm. And so it drives you to understand that there are a lot of things you don't know and you need to know them. Uh, I mean, there are maybe some inconsequential things that aren't so important, but when you learn some facts, mm. it fixes in your mind an understanding of who God is and how he affected people in a powerful way. And that's the real purpose of Heroes 1 and Heroes 2. And thank you uh, so much, uh, by the way, for joining. I don't want to take up uh, any more of your time. Um, I know you have things to do, but uh, quickly before you leave, um, I would like to know if, uh, if you have any final words of encouragement uh, for church members uh, in the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division and, and even perhaps um, uh, the world. Well, uh, it's been a great privilege to be with you, and uh, I wouldn't mind talking with you for another half hour or another hour. Because <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. PKs unite. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and, and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, catching all of your enthusiasm. So praise oh, God praise for that. God. <laughs> uh, and uh, the Holy Spirit is, is working with you and the, and the group. Mm. But um, let, me just, let me just share... Um, a, a beautiful text. It's, it's one of my favorites mm. from a uh, little book of Joel. And uh, it's Joel chapter 2. And uh, of course, chapter 2 talks about some mighty things and about the former reign and the latter reign. And we need to be praying for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit because that's what's going to really make this message go like wildfire all over Africa, all over Asia, Europe, South America. North America, it doesn't matter where it is. Mm. The, the Holy Spirit's going to work powerfully. But there's a beautiful verse, which is probably my favorite verse, one of them, uh, Joel 2.21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Mm. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Now that's in the New King James Version. In, in the King James, it says he will do great things. So I'm going to tell you, our God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in one. I can't explain that, but I accept it by faith, and I'm just so happy mm. to have a wonderful God that loves mm. each of us. Our God has been, is, and will forever be. Yes, he sir. is eternal. And that God has done great things, is doing great things, and will do great things in your life. So if you feel discouraged today, just say, oh, I'm going to read this text. You know, fear not, uh, John, fear not, Mary, fear not, whatever your name is. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord has done and will do great things. And uh, I want to turn to the very last book of the Bible, Revelation 3, which has, of course, uh, part of those seven churches that uh, give us an understanding of the periods of time in uh, the Christian experience. And of course, the Laodicean part is the last part. But in uh, Revelation 3, verse 11, I want to encourage everyone to understand the beautiful truths in that verse. Jesus is speaking. And he's saying, behold, I am coming quickly as a seventh day Adventist. You believe in the Advent, the second Advent, the second coming. So don't ever forget that you are a believer in Jesus soon coming. Right. In fact, when you say your name, seventh day Adventist, the name of the church, you tell somebody that you are preaching an evangelistic sermon in that name. Mm. You tell people where you've come from. Mm. Seventh day, God created this world in, in 6,000, uh, 
about 6,000 years ago in six days and rested on the Sabbath. So he asked us, and that's really the crux of the mark of the beast mm. and the seal of God, because the mark of the, belief, uh, mark of the beast is worshiping on a false day of worship, which right. I will tell you, uh, we know is Sunday. It's not the right day to work worship. Right. And we are to worship on God's day, which is the seventh day Sabbath, which is the seal of God. Right. So the mark of the beast is your acceptance of worshiping on a false day, Sunday, but the seal of God is worshiping on the seventh day Sabbath, all through the power of God. And so seventh day Adventist tells you where you've come from, why you're here mm. and where you're going. You're right. going, <laughs> you believe in the, in the second Advent. So it says, Jesus says in verse 11, Revelation 3, Behold, I am coming quickly. Mm. I believe it. Hold fast what you have. Now that's really important. Right. That's we're referring to the 28 fundamental beliefs and slippage and understanding. Mm. All Hold fast to what you have. Don't let your precious belief in God slip away every day. Make it fresh mm. Kneel before the Lord and pray, read the Holy word of God, read the spirit of prophecy, and then ask the Lord to give you a mission to share with somebody else. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. Mm. Uh, those you know, Jesus is coming soon and we're going to be, given crowns and when we get to heaven we're going to take off those crowns and throw them at the feet of jesus toss them not angrily but just <laughs> right. out of great respect right. because we're going to say heaven was cheap enough all we had to do was believe on the lord and let him work in our lives and accept him and he he worked in us marvelously to will and to do of his own good pleasure mm. what a marvelous thing thank you lord don't let anyone take your crown. Hold fast to that which is right and good because Jesus is coming soon. Oh, wonderful, wonderful words to, to end with and, and encouraging words as well. Um, and, and you know what? I feel like this bond is actually a lot stronger than people know. And I'll explain why. Because when you started reading the Bible verses, Joel is my second name. So, oh. <laughs> but, but thank you so much once again, and uh, may the Lord continue uh, blessing and guiding you in all the work uh, that you do, and may his face shine upon you. Thank you so much, Elder Ted Wilson. And there you have it, folks, another installment of GNN. Now, if you'd like to get a hold of us with a story or maybe you want to offer help to someone in one of the stories that you have heard please feel free to write an email to us at echo at sid.adventist.org and we will get you in touch with the right people. Now, if you would also want to read more stories like what you've heard today, you can do so by going to our website. It's as easy as www.echo.sid.adventist.org. Special thanks to Pastor Ted Wilson for joining us. Wait, I'm just realizing now that the interview is done. He's going to be gone, and if he's gone, who's going to be my best friend? <laughs> JD, do it. <laughs> my guys, my guys. <laughs> you know I was joking, right? <laughs> I was joking about the whole, you can't be best friends anymore. <laughs> you know, it's no joke. Sorry, guys, I got to go call my friends. JD, Dwayne, guys. <laughs>